Well, welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us again. You know, I've been making pie crust for 40 years, but I got my very first food processor this year, and I just learned how to make a really good, perfect pie crust with a food processor, and it's ridiculously easy. Here are your ingredients. Please pause and write them down, and let's get cooking. I'm going to use lard in this pie crust, half lard, half butter, and I'm going to show you how the easy way to measure lard. I have a cup of water here. I want a half cup of lard, so uh, lard usually comes in a chunk. It doesn't come in nice sticks so that they're easy to measure. So I'm going to fill this cup up until the water level reaches a cup and a half. That way I don't have to put it into a measuring cup and then scoop it out with a spatula. Just hold it under the water to make sure that you've got the right measurement. There you go. You can see that I've chopped up uh, a stick of butter into tiny small pieces and I'm going to spread this lard out. Then I'm going to put the whole thing in the freezer and once the lard is frozen I'll cut it up into little chunks like the butter. And don't skip this step, it's really important. After your shortening has had time to freeze, probably half an hour to an hour is enough, cut that lard up into little chunks. I have measured two and a half cups of all-purpose flour and one teaspoon salt sifted together in my food processor. Then we're just gonna dump all of this shortening in here. You don't have to be careful about it, just dump it in. Then we're gonna pulse it together. And I'll let you know, I'm gonna do this in real time. Uh, it's not gonna be time lapse. I want you to see exactly how much time this takes. And I'll just start pulsing. If you've ever wondered why some pie crust recipes call for butter and some for lard, and some for a mixture of the two. Lard makes a flakier crust like for fruit pies and butter makes a tender crust with butter flavor for cream pies. I'm using a mixture of the two. So let's check it. You can see we've still got a few fairly large pieces. That would be okay for a fruit pie. We're making a cream pie. We want it a little finer. And once again, I'm showing you all of the blending time so that you can see how very quickly this goes. I'm blending this to a very fine mealy texture uh, because that holds up better to the moisture in a cream pie. And, this, and I'm going to make cream pies. You might leave the bigger chunks if you're making a fruit pie because the bigger chunks make for a little bit flakier crust. So if you want a flaky crust, don't over blend. See, this is pretty fine, and I think it's done. Now we'll add our water. I had a cup of ice water here, and the ice has melted, but I'm probably only going to use half of it. So I start pouring it in very slowly while the mixture is on blend, uh, and when it gets to the right point, it'll just start congealing together and you'll watch for that and you'll stop adding water then and that's going to be right around a half cup. So you see how it's looking. There's still some flour at the bottom. I'm going to stir it just a little bit uh, and I've used right at a half cup. That's pretty hard. Just want to chunk it up a little bit. And then I may add another tablespoonful or so of water. And I'll let you watch that as it goes so you can see the point at which you want to take it out. See, right away. Just another little bit of water and it's all coming together. And you want to stop blending right away because you don't want to overwork the dough. And I'll show it to you so you can see what you're looking for. It's all pulled together. We don't have flour on the sides. This is going to be a great pie crust. I have a piece of floured parchment here, but you can do this right on your counter if you want to. My, my counter has grout, so I don't want to work directly on it. 
but you just want to pull it together, form it into a ball. I'm not kneading it. I do a minimum of mixing with my hands. Your hands are warm. That'll make your pie crust tough if you knead it or if you let it get too warm. And I'm just going to shape it so that I can cut it into fairly equal pieces because I'm going to make two pie crust. And if you want to, you know, you can use a scale and weigh this so that you have exact half and half. But this is close enough for me. My two pie plates are different sizes anyway. I'm going to form these into two circles as close as I can. And um, then I'll put them in the refrigerator to chill. Now just so you know, if you are going to be making pies for the holidays, you can make this crust several days ahead and just wrap it in the uh, plastic wrap and pop it in the freezer and then let it thaw overnight and it'll be just like fresh. And if you're going to use it within two days, you can just pop it in the fridge. All wrapped up, I'm going to pop these in the fridge for about an hour, then we'll be back. Let me introduce you to my pastry cloth. This is a handy dandy tool. Nothing sticks to it, makes cleanup easy. It has the uh, measurements to show you the pie crust size. And I can't use my counter because I have grouted counters, uh, but I love this pastry cloth. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I roll out pie dough. It may be helpful to you, I don't know. But there are a couple little tricks I'll share with you. First, let your dough warm up just a little bit before you start rolling it. If it's too cold, it'll crack as you work it. Second, flour it generously. I've got my guides here on the pastry cloth that will help me keep to a circle. And when you start to roll it, you want to roll from the middle out. And you want to roll uh, in one direction. You don't want to go from side to side and up and down. Just keep to the same direction. Middle out and use slightly more pressure in the middle than on the edges. Uh, pie crust tends to end up thinner in the middle and that will cause it to burn. Repair any little cracks as you go. And if you go back and forth in several directions, uh, you're more likely to make the crust stick and if you do it this way, you get um, a more even crust. And if you've made your crust right, it, it'll stand up to this kind of movement. So back and forth, back and forth, until you get it to the size you want it. And once we've gotten it to that size, we might turn our rolling pin a little bit uh, just to sort of even out the edges. But you see, by moving it this way, we form our circle. And when your crust is big enough, you can turn your um, rolling pin in different directions in order to make the circle more perfect. So you see, I've checked with my pan. I've, it's just about big enough. I'm just evening it out. Getting rid of any rough edges. And I'm using a fair amount of pressure Flip it one more time. Check our shape. You're going for an eighth inch thickness. And one of the reasons we moved the pie crust so much is so that we get it even all over at about an eighth of an inch. Now to transfer it to your pie plate, you want to loosely roll it over your rolling pin. Just like that. And then we'll unroll it over our pie plate. And I'm leaving it very loose now. So immediately what I start to do then is push the pie crust toward the center and that's to take off any stress because if you have it stretched uh, when it starts to cook it'll rise up pull thin uh, and just make a bubble in your pie so so just gently ease it inward then I'm going to trim off the excess with a pair of kitchen scissors 
I want to leave about a quarter inch flap to fold under to make the flute but you can just cut it off even with a knife and then crimp it with a fork it's it's just up to you I like to make a flute mine are not necessarily perfect but I like the way a fluted crust looks when the pie is done and it stays together better when it's cut once we get the excess cut away I'm gonna fold a little flap under and this is just going to give you a little thickness to make the flute, the fluted edge. There are several different kinds of fluted edges you can make. I just make the easiest one. And you want to try to fold this fairly uniformly. And confession, uniformity is not something at which I excel. But I give it a try. And yours may be much prettier than mine. So when you've got it folded, sort of pat it all the way around and then we'll flute. And I just hold two knuckles up and push a finger in between and that gives you a reasonably nice flute. You can do it uh, just with your fingers, but when my nails get long then I don't do that because it cuts into it. See? But, so anyway I'm using my knuckles you may use your fingers but just go around all the way around and there you have it now you know if you're making a two crust pie you put the two crust together before you do your trimming then you make your fold and then you um, flute it and I'm looking to make sure there are no thin spots you can still do some adjustment now and there you have it when making cream pies I usually brush it with melted butter and then refrigerate it that helps prevent a soggy bottom to your pie uh, you can also do this with a beaten egg white just with cream pies I like to use butter it sort of sizzles the bottom and I'll refrigerate this while I make my pie filling and here are my finished pies. Not too shabby, I think, and oh, so easy. If you have a food processor, I really recommend this method. If you don't have a food processor or you prefer handmade dough, I will include a link to my basic buttery pie crust recipe in the info section. Thanks for joining us. See you again tomorrow.